What's the old saying in life? The only thing guaranteed are death and taxes. I would argue change is on that list as well. And change is coming in the way you and I drive. You see, California and Germany, they are about to legalize level three autonomy. No, that is not a self-driving car. Instead, the car takes the, really the car manufacturer takes the liability in certain situations. So today, you and I are gonna test those certain situations. So first things first, what is a level three autonomous system? Well, in this case, it starts out life as a level two autonomous system, which means it's an adaptive cruise control. The car can maintain a specified distance between it and the car in front of it, as well as stay in a specific lane. This system requires you to be attentive. So in previous tests of the W223S class with the system, as well as other cars, you and I have to put our hands back on the wheel every 30 seconds or so. But how does it actually work? Well, it works with systems throughout the vehicle, but the sensors are not just one specific type. Like for example, there's a radar system here, as well as a LiDAR system in the front. Then there's a, an array of cameras, like for example, one in the front, as well as on the mirrors and around the vehicle. Then coming around to the side of the vehicle, there is a sensor off to the side, and this is the same that's in the level two autonomous systems that are on the road today. Where we have our first departure from level two to level three is here. Remember in the Porsche 992 when we first drove that car, it has a wet mode. The wet mode is keyed off of a microphone that is in the wheel well that can hear the moisture on the road. So in cases where you don't have the wipers on, but there's still moisture, that's what the mic will do. This has a mic in the same place. Then there are the stereo cameras up front here. And then just underneath the stereo cameras, there's a camera like the one we have in the front. Moving to the rear of the vehicle, this is another departure from level two to level three. And that is a camera that hangs off the headliner. This is the only item that looks like it's sorta of out of place and kind of an afterthought. Then if you look at the top of the vehicle, just behind the panoramic roof, you notice a very big hump. That is a much more precise GPS tracker. So it's like an ADS-B on a plane where it uses the data of the position of the vehicle, maps it onto the GIS data from the navigation system and takes all of the inputs we just discussed. Okay, so Joe, where are we right now? We're here in Immendingen in the south of Germany, uh, very close to the Swiss border. Um, this is our test track um, where we can test automated and also electric driving functions. And uh, we are on the oval course now, which is our highway on these premises. A highway that has a traffic jam. Yeah, we have a traffic jam. Here you go. And happens to be that every car in the traffic jam is a Mercedes. Well, things happen. <laughs> <laughs> so could you please turn on your, your level two system? Just press set. Okay, so set yep. here, yep. so I'm at 60, and this is as if I would be in a serial production S-Class yes. with a normal level 2 system. Exactly. And for the affordance of doubt, the only hardware difference inside the vehicle are these buttons Are these on buttons, the exactly. So now, so now we're them. engaged, activating drive pilot, okay. and now hands off the wheel. Yep, it tells you remain ready to take control, Okay. but the responsibility is with us now. So when we say the responsibility is with you, what's exactly happening between you and the government for that to happen? Uh, we have to prove that we are capable of dealing with tricky situations, which we'll, we will encounter some of them in this, in this, this uh, demonstration that you see. But the most important thing for you as a customer while driving in level three is you can do side activities legally. You can, for example, if you want on the head unit, uh, hit the home button, home button, go to apps, apps, and hit the browser. And if you want, you can open your own homepage, for example. You can do your emails. You can watch TV. You can talk to your wife. You're an engineer. Yes. Are there, are there are debates, philosophical debates of, should we even be incenting this kind of behavior at this point? There is debates. And uh, during the entire uh, development process of many of our systems, but especially for this drive pilot, uh, we have um, meetings and we have special departments for ethics, for, of course, legal. A department we discuss that very much and of course we have our own um, um, thresholds that we have to meet and we have our own uh, tests we do which are far more than what we have to do from a legal point of view mm -hmm. to deal with the what ifs mm -hmm. the important thing is driving is the easy part of autonomous driving mm -hmm. it's what happens if something unexpected occurs 
if somebody cuts in very close and then does an emergency brake, uh, if somebody loses uh, um, something from their trailer, um, if somebody walks around on the highway, uh, if there's an accident, if there's emergency vehicles, what do you do in these situations? And uh, we look at them very close. And of course, there's a lot of regulations, but we always, as for many, many decades, we've been doing in passive safety as well. We are always looking at real life safety, not only so legal I'm safety. Inject on you here. This is one of these scenarios. Yeah. I've got a stop truck. We've got a stop truck. Is the car? Oh, so he's going to go. He's going to go, and so you don't have to do anything. See? There so, he is. unlike a level two, would have turned off at that point. Exactly. Was it thirty seconds? Yeah, thirty seconds on a highway, fifteen seconds on a normal road, um, and it, it never warns you to put your hands back on unless there's a situation with the system which the system cannot cope with. But even if you don't react, then the car would come to a safe stop, mm -hmm. even if something failed on a technical side. Mm -hmm. If your battery breaks down for whatever reason or a bird drops something on your camera, um, we always have up to 10 seconds to either take over when there's a request, which will be very clear, uh, and you'll see that later. So uh, right or now we're going, we have a stop we're going around a stalled car. Yeah, and there's even two of them. The system is smart enough to pick that up. Yeah, and we even go around the second one. Okay. See? It a little bit a little delayed bit. there. That one... Yeah was a little bit slower. Just for the safe side, first it picked up that car and then it saw, okay, somebody else is going, I have another lead vehicle which I need. Okay. Um, technically, and so then it picked up this car and then it kept going. Now let me interject here. This is telling me, uh, war, there's an yep. interrupt screen, remain ready to take control of the You've vehicle. You've got to press OK, yep, exactly. Uh, that how was, often does it do that? It does that when it doesn't see both of your eyes anymore. You is turn, it a sunglasses thing? Or no, just it's because you had turned to me too long. You have about five seconds to, to look to the back, to turn away. Um, but we don't allow to or to close your eyes even. Do you have an issue with polarized no. sunglasses? No. It's, it's made so you can look, of course, to the front mm. and to your head unit here. That's also one of the reasons why we, we were looking very hard in mode confusion scenarios. When this turns off, it, you're driving manually. We don't want you to, to, to be in mode confusion, okay? And if you jump back from three to two, it feels very much the same but it's your responsibility mm. so that's when we tell take over you take over and then you decide going up you can go zero two three but going down it goes from three to zero so to speak Pay oh, attention. someone Oops. tried to cut me off see and you weren't even paying attention so my job worked because my job is to distract you <laughs> you're good at it <laughs> I've done it a couple times <laughs> okay we got these guys doing yeah. this of course you have to imagine there's completely congested traffic yeah we have about I think seven cars around in this scenario just for efficiency reasons. Now is this system a funk? We talked a little bit earlier about mm -hmm. all of the hardware on the outside of the vehicle. Is it also using mapped roads for this? Yes. So there are certain roads this would not work on. Right. At the moment we're using it only on restricted access highways so it would be interstates in the US mm -hmm. and major state highways which are um, both directions are, are divided and restricted access, so no traffic lights, no cross traffic. And in Germany, it's only the blue autobahns, the real autobahns, the A. Uh, the Here comes the interrupt screen again. So is it sensing on, well, now it's gone now. Yep. I'm distracting you too much, but it's now really required. Now, can I adjust the distance no. based on the sensor? That's not in level that's three. That's a difference between level two and three. In level two, you're in the loop. You can go down to one second, approximately, uh, but not farther than that or closer than that, uh, because of course then, Okay, now, now you have to take me. over. Why is that? Uh, probably because the sun is blinding so much. Okay. Drive pilot off system currently unavailable. Yeah. And now so we we've run a into a technical limitation, so yep. I've turned a little bit. No, we have turned a little bit, and now you can turn it on again. There we go. There it is. Activating, Activating. drive pilot. Yep. Could not be oh, activated. Oh, vehicle. because he's too... We've got to so let me catch up. Close up a little bit, because we need that lead so vehicle. So how much distance do we need between the lead vehicle? It's about yeah. 100 meters. Okay, so now activating drive pilot, and now it's... And of course, this is a very specific system. situation. You would not account encounter that on a real highway, yeah. the slope curve. So mm -hmm. when you first were d discussing this system, mm -hmm. was there any p attention paid, or did you guys put together like focus groups with owners and say... Do you want to be looking at the internet yes. when you're driving? What did people tell you? They told us, we want to we want to get back time. This guy is crazy. Oh. And the car honked. And the car honked and told you, you better take control now. Okay. Okay, so the easiest way is press the button. Press the button. Yep. And off we go again. This it guy, man, he's, 
I feel like I feel like I'm driving in Paris <laughs> or something. Okay, like that. can put it on again. Back again. Yeah. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, research now. We as engineers are not the guys doing the te uh, doing the, the questionnaires, mm -hmm. but of course our marketing people talk a lot to people. What do you expect from an automated car? Mm -hmm. And they told us yes, of course. If I get back time, I can relax. Yes. Ultimately, probably I somebody wants to sleep, but just to be able to relax and to be your own passenger, so to speak. What percentage of people saying they they want to be doing? Something I couldn't else? tell you the percentage, but. They tell you they want to do emails, they want to look, they want to browse the internet, they want to watch TV. You can even, if I can show you, you can even play some, some mini games in here. Um, you could play Tetris here if you wanted. I think the next time. Oh, hey now. Uh, was a full break. <laughs> I saw what you did there, did. <laughs> Mr. Distraction. <laughs> oh, you can play Tetris. You can play Tetris. He knows that's the only yeah. game that I liked when I was growing up. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, well, video games. Yeah. I'm a big Monopoly fan. You like Monopoly? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. A very high percentage. At People least more than half. People actually they would sleep? They said they would sleep? Ultimately, yes. You're but kidding. not in level three. Of course, that I would be level four and five. Far. As it I'm is, not part of that group, to me. be exact. Yeah. yeah, me, I need to be driving. Yeah. But probably it's also because we're just so used to it. I think younger people, they tend to, I mean, they grow up. It's generation whatever Joe, now. we need to yeah. slap these young kids around, yeah. you and I. That's what we need to do. I'm glad I have kids that love to drive. You've got something coming up here. you got a safety vehicle behind us. I don't know if you're trying to distract me on something here, but... <laughs> okay. Oh, here it comes. So okay, you see, we formed that emergency corridor, which is mandatory in, in Germany. Okay. There we go. Oh, what does he do? He hands over. Oh, to me. Yep. Got it. You and got the it. Belt just and I, you gotta make exactly because you never know why is he coming? Is something strange up there or whatever? Yeah. That's why we hand over in that situation. Other people might do strange things, so it's better you drive. But after that, after he's gone, and I can if you just pick again. up again, it's not offering yet. Oh, because it's too far away. You got to close up a little more. There we go. Now we can. So, in addition to the lidar, the radar, the stereo cameras. The cameras around the vehicle, the camera in the back, and the big GPS. Another input point are the mics in the, the mics. car. Yep. So now he's marshalling us off. Yep. So okay. let's see what happens. Oh, let it do its thing. Yeah, let, okay. it, let it do its thing. Oh, you close the, the road. Yes. Yeah. So it hands over. What if you don't react? Once again. Okay, you did react. You but it would stop. come to a stop. It would have stopped. Yeah, but stopped. you felt how it started to break, right? <laughs> okay. I tell you, the pull the tie here. That's it. a very fancy system. So turn back in. Turn back in. No. Joe, this was a, a, a great experience. I really my, appreciate this. My Thank pleasure. Thank you so much. And hope Especially to see you again. for the uh, the side drive where I got to drive the thing high speed. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Okay, so what have we learned today? Well, number one, this is a sizable baby step on the road to autonomy. Uh, number two, you and I really do need to spend more time with this in the wild, not on a controlled test loop in Germany. So let's wait until we get this system in California. And California will be one of the first places where we can legally do it. So it's not that far off. And then number three, I think this is more of a discussion between you and I rather than between me and Joe. And Joe is the man. Uh, do you really want this? And what would you really be doing with that time you capture when you're not paying attention to driving? Me? Maybe it's because I'm older, maybe it's because I'm a car guy and a pilot. I just can't cede control of a two and a half ton vehicle to a computer. But I am just one man, and this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All Word, Moto Man TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I do want to leave you with a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, so I flew all the way over to Germany for the opportunity to not drive an S Class and drive an EQXX as well as an electric GLB. Uh, and the Mercedes folks were kind enough to set me up with a cameraman. And my cameraman is Greek. Until I see you in the next episode. Bis später.